Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Flyer here. Today we're going to try to tackle white. Now, white's an interesting color to paint. It does take some patience and you have to think about it differently than you would with, say, blue or, you know, some other brown or green. It's, it doesn't work the same way. And the reason is, is that white is the absence of color. So to get to a pure white, you literally need to have no other color. Unfortunately, paints are transparent and when you have transparent paint over another color, you get what's underlying affecting what's on the top layer. So that's what makes the white so frustrating is that you sit there and you think, oh, I'll just paint white over this black primer or this other color, and you don't really get the tone and the vibrancy that you're looking for. So the three examples that I have here right now are examples of warm and cold whites. And what I mean by that is that a warm white, like this urban mech here on the left, is an example of a brown or uh, ivory type of base coat and the brown wash is used to provide the contrast and this this miniature actually is not white it's ivory it's the uh, it's Vallejo model color ivory and I'll show you the paint that I used for that here momentarily but it's if you look at it it's white in that sense but if you look at it compared to another white miniature aka this uh, awesome here it's not as bright it's not as pure white this is a example of a cold white and it was gray was used underneath and that's the example I'll be showing you today because it's one of the easier methods, one of the first methods I used to paint white. It's not a perfect pure brand new fresh, fresh out of the, the paint shop white but it, it provides I think a realistic and uh, decent result for the amount of work that you have to put into it. And then over here this is how I used to paint this white and what has happened is since this miniature is 10 years old this is what it used to look like and I've gotten some fading and yellowing from the clear coats that I was using 10 years ago uh, either due to heat and, and UV and all of that so uh, when I actually paint today I'm not going to use the original white color that got me to this uh, lighter white and if you probably washing out a little bit on the camera here but uh, this is much brighter than this one and this is brighter than this one so there's kind of a three three tiers of, of level that you get so when I when I go to the actual final highlight color I'll, I'll remind you uh, that I'm using a off-white instead of the actual white that I would be using to provide that final color. So just keep that in mind. If you want to follow along and do the same thing with the off-white, you're more than welcome to. So like I said here, this uh, urban mech was done with ivory. So the base coat was done with a gray and then the uh, colors were built up. Brown was used primarily for the washes as you can tell in the recesses and cracks. It's not a black contrast type of white paint scheme. And that's just this model color ivory is the final highlight color on this. So not a pure white, still fairly close to it and it does look good. Uh, but if you were wanting to get a absolute perfect pure white, that would not necessarily be what you'd look to do. You could also use the ivory as a coating underneath to highlight up, up to white if you were trying to do something like that to get an intermediate layer. Now this, the awesome, was done with, the final highlight was originally done with game color white. It's worn off, I've had this color for a while. But like I said, the, the overall finish has, I guess, I wouldn't say tarnished, but uh, gotten dingy, maybe? But uh, I like it, I like the way it looks. So I, I, I prefer things that are, you know, painted white and used in war, probably gonna be a little bit less than perfectly clean. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but the difference you can see, at least if you look at it under my light, there's white here and it has yellowed over here. So that is why I'm gonna be using the off-white and I might even throw a little bit of ivory into that mix too because I'm painting this miniature shade to match up with the other level one that I already, or level twos that I painted for these uh, Word of Blake mix. So again, I'm gonna differ just a little bit from what I did originally just 
to make my units match, but I'll still be demonstrating the same principles and all you'd have to do is switch colors. And then these guys I painted recently, they're not finished yet, but this is the white that is uh, Reaper, not Reaper, pardon me. Uh, that is actually this game color white and how it, it actually looks. So it's hard to tell with the washout because the light that I'm using obviously can uh, affect the level of, of white balance and all of that. But uh, just trust me, they're different and you know, you can uh, pick up a, a regular white paint and go from there. Or if you want to make me tone it down a little bit and do something a little more subdued or, or dirty and worn, that's what, what I'm showing you how to do today. So what I've done with my miniatures is I primed them in white and I'm doing that because this is how I did it 10 years ago and, the, and I'm trying to match the scheme. It doesn't mean you have to prime in white. You could prime in gray, that's fine. No big deal. But what you're gonna wanna do is bring it back up to a lighter gray. So what I've done is I've primed these white and then I have coated them with a couple of very thin coats of Vallejo Model Color Sky Gray. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but you do need to get the, the majority of the coverage over it because this is gonna be the darkening, uh, the first stage of the darkening. And then from here, we're gonna build up to the lighter tones we're gonna use Again, this is an older color, Vallejo Flat Aluminum. That code's long, long since gone away, but uh, this flat aluminum is gonna take that gray up another step. And then what we'll do is, I'll show you how to make it, we'll do what's called a soft wash, uh, or a soft body wash, if you, <laughs> if you think of it that way. Secret Weapon Miniatures makes a, a soft body black. I actually haven't used it yet. Uh, I'd like to buy it and get it, but the mixture I made is a soft gray wash, basically, we're using gray paint and adding flu fluid medium and water to get a wash that will not overpower the white. Now, a lot of people say, oh, don't wash over white. You're not gonna get white. Well, that's true. Uh, however, we're not washing coverage wise. We're going to try to just place it into the cracks. And if it does get onto the panels, we'll be able to wick it away quickly. We're not gonna just slather it on and then hope for the best that you can't do that with white miniatures. It just doesn't work. The, the pooling and the, the texture on the actual surface because even though you might not be able to see it here, there is surface texture and all of that will pick up all those little t uh, shades from the wash and then you're gonna be stuck with something that just doesn't look white. It's gonna look kind of dirty gray because of the way your eye will see the different color variances close together. It'll just merge together and you end up with that, that kind of a, just a dingy uh, whitish gray color and that's what a lot of people get frustrated with and they try to dry brush it and things like that. It just doesn't work. So, and there will be a couple points where I'll stop and let you all know that you can dry brush or move on to a different technique. All right, so I've got some flat aluminum thinned down in my super awesome water bottle cap here. And I'm just using a generic base coating brush. This is a number four Hobby Lobby synthetic. And all I'm doing is basically picking out the high panels, throw in this thin coat over everything. Now I'm not trying to cram it into the, the recesses and anything I'm getting close up to like on the edges and stuff. I'm going to go ahead and just leave a little bit of that uh, color off of that because when I go to wash that'll just add to the darkening level of that. So you don't have to be perfect with this. You don't have to worry about it. Oh, I didn't get it up to the edge or oh, I painted up to the edge. Don't worry. It's not, it's not imperative. I'm just looking to get a way to lighten up the overall color of the miniature from the, the light gray that we've already established. And what you'll see with this first coat, because it's, it's gonna take two coats, is that the gray will be transparent and you'll be able to see it through this flat aluminum. So even though this isn't even a white, it's, it's a flat aluminum, so it's, it's really more of a, a very, very light gray it is acting like the white paint would. And it's, it's doing exactly what I talked about with the transparency and not necessarily covering up what's underneath. And really all paint is transparent. It's just some obviously shows better through and white's not gonna help you out covering anything up because it is the absence of color. So I'm just looking for smooth application. I've got it thinned down pretty, uh, pretty well. Now I'm just going through and doing the grunt work. 
it's not that exciting and it's it is tedious and it that you do have to accept that when you paint white it's it's going to be less than fun for some of the period of time that you're doing it i'm just trying to take away some of that overall frustration and at the very least after all the hassle you've got something that you're proud of that you enjoy and like this is a white demonstration on how to use brush I'm slowly working into using my airbrush more for things and I'm almost positive that if I were to do white that wasn't trying to match something that I painted previously I would be taking a hack at it with the airbrush The reason you want thinned paints that are, as you get closer and closer to white, is that you'll get that chalky texture, and unfortunately that's not something you can easily remove from the surface of the model, so then it, it ends up looking weird. It, it doesn't uh, take, it won't take a wash very well, and it won't appear correct. It looks, you'll see that, you'll be able to see the texture in some cases which isn't really what we want. Now I'm gonna do these joints and stuff uh, with the bronze uh, technique that I did on the previous miniature. So there's there's not, I don't need to go in and necessarily get all the inner ventings and little like areas that are gonna be metallic, that I'm, I know I'm gonna paint metallic. So if you have a plan, you know, you don't have to paint everything. But if you, if you did the whole miniature with flat aluminum, that's fine. It's not gonna be a big deal because I usually put black down and then put my metallic over it. So you'll have no problem but if you want to save time or if you're doing a bunch of these then you know try to have a have a little plan in place to help you out you can also move the brush perpendicular to the panel lines that can help keep it out of some of the deeper ones it's not going to stay out of the the shallower ones it's, there's not a whole lot of time you need to spend doing that it this, this isn't again this is not a showroom fresh Oh man, this brand new white paint. If we were doing that, we'd be it'd be a completely different way of going about things, and we certainly wouldn't be washing over what would be a base coat of white here shortly. It's going to take a solid two, two layers or two coats, however you want to think about it. So just work your way up the model and then start over again once it's dry. Sometimes if I see the brush strokes going one direction, I'll cross them to go the other direction to kind of mask some of that. The other thing you can think about too is maybe on that second coat or if you want to do a third coat as you're highlighting, you know, the, the, the light's going to straight at the top of the model. So you can think about light sources and how that would affect where you would want to maybe put more layers to lighten it up. So maybe the top of the shoulder panels are going to get, you know, three or four coats. And it's also something that we'll, we'll take into account once we do the actual highlight colors with the white or in my case off-white but those are all things you can you can think about because that'll help provide a little bit of variety and, and uh, variation in tone which will make it look more realistic in that it's not all just white or it has at least some 
visual uniqueness amongst itself so that it doesn't it breaks it up a little bit and doesn't look off I know you're probably thinking well why don't you just put the flat aluminum right over the white primer it's like well it'll be it'll definitely be brighter and like I said when I when I go and paint this I want a little bit of that imperfection I want there to be dark areas where that maybe I missed a little bit going up to an edge I want to have some of that because that will actually enhance the way that I'm painting this scheme because I get a a bit of area where it's like oh there's a little bit of grease or there's grime and dirt or carbon marks or wh whatever but it it adds a little bit to the realism at this scale because there's just only so many things you can do providing contrast before you get to the point where it's so small that it doesn't really define itself you got to help it along somehow so so for these under underarm areas I'm just gonna put this first layer on and when I come back to do the second layer I'm not gonna put a second layer underneath it I'm just gonna let it let it ride of the two is that you know that's eh, not a big big deal it, it, it is subtle and that's what's gonna happen after the first layer you're gonna basically lay down that foundation over the top of the gray and then it's going to slowly work up as you put that second coat on but we don't want to lighten it too much because we'll end up having to duplicate our work because when we put that wash over it we are still gonna go back and do more uh, layering of or I should say coating with the white so you don't want to really take two steps forward and then three steps back. One or two steps back is okay though. So now I'm going here and I'm definitely hitting anything that's that's flat that stands out. Paint's nice and thin. It's got a good overall base coat on here now so it'll help fill in some of the brush strokes and inconsistencies from the, the first coat and if you're not happy with it after the second coat do a third one if you don't think it's it's really gotten good coverage or you just maybe your paint was a little bit thinner than you had anticipated or you just don't like the look of it that's you know you're right to add a little more just keep it thin so you're not working up because that's again that's the one of the key elements of working with white is you just really can't let it get thick and you can't apply it thick it just doesn't doesn't do what you want it to do You can definitely see he's brighter now. Nice uniform color. Right, next up we're gonna have to put a gloss coat over it and I didn't do that in my original miniatures but had I known that trick back then I would have done it. Basically we're gonna put a gloss varnish over it. You can use three dollar can of Krylon gloss clear. It works great. I've used that several times. I'll probably end up using my airbrush but when I come back, this will be shiny. And what that'll do is allow the wash to work its way into the crevices and not pool up as easily on the flat surfaces, which is what we want with white. So 
Uh, I'll show you that and how to do the gray wash shortly. All right, so the gloss is dried. Krylon clear coat. If you used an airbrush, you wouldn't have to wait as long, but I recommend whatever clear gloss that you use, you let it cure and completely dry fully so it doesn't interact with anything we're gonna do. All right, so we're gonna talk about that soft wash. And what I mean by that is we're gonna use paint, flow improver, and water to make a wash that is not as bold and pigment heavy as an ink or a uh, off-the-shelf purchased wash would be. And the reason for that is we're going over white. We don't want it to be as strong and thinning inks and things like that, uh, you know, you might you don't want to go out and buy necessarily a specific black ink and try to get it to go to gray because it's still going to have the black pigment in it. So we want a gray pigment just to make it easier for that translucency to work in our favor because white is dealing with translucency. So like I talked about at the beginning. So I've already got a pre-made mixed bottle of this stuff. So I call it soft gray. Uh, the initial ratio I had was a little bit strong and what ended up happening was this is a little bit a little bit darker than I wanted it to be. However, that gray, you can see, looks close to black as far as the recesses are concerned. So uh, with the soft gray on the surface where the gloss helps kind of prevent it from pooling up as much, the translucency of the white we're gonna put over it will work in our favor in that regard because then we'll get a transition because you can see where the edges are lighter and it kind of gets darker in certain areas. So without doing any blending, there's gonna be some natural transitions on these flat panels that you didn't have to do anything to other than put paint over them. So that's what we're gonna, that's what we're doing. And that's why when everyone says, oh, don't put a wash over a white miniature. Well, the reason is because you're not gonna have it white anymore. And that's, that's what it's doing. So when I talk about the paint, I used Reaper Armor Gray. This is this, uh, it's a darker gray. If you have a base gray, a viejo base gray would work. Something similar to this color. It can be a little bit lighter. You probably don't want it much darker. And if, if it was darker and it's the only gray that you have, or you're working with black, add white to it and get it to something close to this this color consistency and then for the flow improver I used the uh, I used uh, future floor polish but you can also use uh, Liquitex slow dry or any other flow improver and you can look that up and how to do that and then the water I just use regular distilled water so one drop of paint two of flow improver and four of water at a larger ratio and if you're gonna do a bunch of miniatures I fully recommend you make a bottle worth because mixing it and getting it right and being happy with it after uh, after you're done you know, if you're, if you're going long term and have several to paint, it'll be happier in the long run just to have it on hand. So, so now I'm going to show how we're going to apply that on this Griffin. And again, I'm using my basic synthetic number four brush that I use for just about all this grunt work. And the, the technique for this is going to be a little bit different than just coating the miniature with a wash. I know I don't want it to pull up on the flat surfaces, but it's gonna be unavoidable. There's, you're gonna turn the white gray, so accept that. White's a, white is a process and it is not an easy color to work with, but you've already committed to doing this anyway, so you know, take it and see it to the end. So I'm just working one small section at a time. I'm not trying to just cover up the entire leg or, or miniature all at once like I could maybe with a brown or a, a black or on, on, on different colors. So. And the reason for that is I gotta avoid the pooling. So I've got a paper towel handy as well off, off uh, frame here. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for anything like on this surface here, I'm gonna do it intentionally, like that dark pooling right there. Obviously I don't want that. So in the middle of when I'm just doing this small section, I'm gonna wick all the paint off my brush or the, the wash off my brush and just come in and take it down. Now I'm not trying to go to the edges. If you go to the edges, the bristles are gonna actually capillary action wick away that that wash so you, you do have to accept that there's going to be areas where it's going to be a little bit darker here and there but if you can control it and make it look like that that's that's what you're looking to do okay but if you just slather it all over the place you're going to get pooling in areas it's going to be less controlled and you're going to have more coverage uh, issues later on with the white and you're just going to have to spend more time fixing it and that's really what we're doing with this is we're we're intentionally messing it up to fix it to get the result that we want and again this is for me to mimic the scheme I did 10 years ago. Now I've learned a few things here and there since the last decade, but because I'm trying to make this exactly the same or as close to it as possible, I'm repeating some of the steps that I probably wouldn't ordinarily do. So like I said, the whole priming gray and then taking it up or priming it white and taking it up to a light gray and so on and so forth. If you have a light gray primer, start with a light gray primer. I'm not a huge fan of 
putting any sort of wash or anything else other than paint over a primer just because I've had some bad interactions before with certain other things that I do. That doesn't mean that won't work for you, but I'm, I'm almost always going to take primer and then put a base coat of actual paint over that before I start any sort of wash or ink or any other, any other work, uh, clear coats, things like that. So that's, that's just my personal preference. If you have something that works for you, you know, by all means, and feel free to share it as well, because I'm, I'm always learning and I'm always looking for new ways and different methods to doing things. So you can see I'm just, I'm going where the recesses are heavy, and then I'm working wherever that is out to the other areas. And it doesn't have to be perfect on the first pass too. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna settle in certain areas. You might need to go back and dab a little bit here and there, or areas where you're like, oh man, you know, I'd like it darker in that that leg joint, or I'd like it darker in the back of his knee, so on and so forth. You can absolutely do that. Then the, the benefit is because this wash, this soft wash is thin, you don't, you don't have this overpowering coverage. The white, because it contrasts so much, is going to do the work for your eye to make it visually seem like it's been black lined, if you, if you think of it that way. It won't be as, you know, the stark contrast, but I, I personal preference is I think that black stark contrast with like doing the pen lining and stuff is almost, is almost too much. It just doesn't, it, it looks unnatural. So that is why I'm doing what I'm doing versus what someone else might like. But if that's your preference, you know, you could, you could throw black over this. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I've taken black wash and put it over, over white before. But there's, it, it's, it's still a lot of work regardless. You're gonna have to go back and cover the whole thing and spend your time building back up. You could also have a second brush if you wanted without the wash on it. You could use that with uh, just damp water to clean things up. Also, if you use a finer brush, for instance, if you had this big panel here, you could take that finer brush and get into the middle. I'll take more of this off here. This is why I would say you have two brushes. You can get in the middle and you can actually work that paint or the, uh, the wash off to where you actually created a lighter spot. And on these bigger, flatter panels, you know, if, if that's something you want to try and do, that's fine. It is, again, it's more work. But when you go to put the white over it, this will be brighter and the outer edges will have some slightly darker uh, translucency. So it'll be. Uh, more of a natural transition again without you having to put any blending in but yeah, you just need to be careful when you're manipulating that because if your wash ends up wicking away or if you if it's dried too much you're going to get streaks and things like that and that can be not desirable but that is something you can certainly try or look at doing if you're not getting the result you want or you want to try something a little different or maybe get a little more contrast without as much post wash paint work get any bubbles just smack them with the with the brush try not to flick the bristles and that'll help reduce the amount of bubbles that get produced you can also blow on it, it usually dries the, the bubble when it pops so Like I said, now I'm just looking for areas that might be a little lacking. Maybe a little bit of the wash wicked away into another direction. Maybe there's areas where it's a little light and I want to go back and reinforce that. Just be careful that if you if you don't add some to it, it can actually take the wash that's already on there away. So you might need to let it dry completely depending on how, how much darker you want it to go. Some of these lines on the legs defined, and it, they're pretty shallow, so I'll likely have to come back and do just a touch up here and there. And I'm not looking to completely cover it again, but just to get some definition on some of those slightly more shallow recesses and lines, or just to reinforce and darken some of the areas, like maybe the ball joints underneath the ankles here, 
backs of the arms, things like that. So definitely let it dry completely. Once you're happy with that first coat, set it aside and let it dry. And like I said, I had to adjust the ratio just a little bit. I added a little, and a little bit more water. And it's kind of hard to tell, but I think maybe you'll get the, the idea. Let's see if we can get this top shot here. Yep. So the tops of the uh, Vulcan's shoulders are slightly darker than the overall tone and color of the longbow. That This is the one that I reduced, the longbow, and this is the one I did initially. And I was like, oh, that seems just a little too dark. Now, it doesn't. it's not bad. I know I can make up for it, but just so you get an idea of what you're looking for in result. And I recommend, like you see on the base here on the longbow, I actually tried out what the color was gonna look like on the second one, and I should have done it on the first one to see how it was gonna look all over the white. So use the resources available to you or have a test miniature or something along that line. Okay, so once the wash is dry, it's time to start doing the paint by numbers, if you will. They're the tedious part of why people don't like painting white. I've got some of my white that I'm gonna use as my color, and again, since I'm trying to match my previous paint scheme with a somewhat yellowed white, I'm actually using Vallejo model color ivory. However, if I were doing this otherwise, I'd be using a off-white. So I've got my ivory in the, in the uh, dish there. And just for comparison, this is off-white, what it'll look like over the, the gray. And the ivory, Again, it's going to wash out a little bit with the overhead lights, but I'll try to get a photograph. But you can see there's a little bit more creaminess uh, on the Tessin than there is on the tank. So just keep that in mind. And, you know, whatever you have available or whatever you're trying to get is a desired result. But because I'm trying to make these match, I'm going to use ivory. But this would be where you would use your white and you would also thin it down a little bit. I'm using a Dardison Shop number zero this is from their minute series 12. so i posted these a while back on the uh, link there they're available on amazon there you get a 12 brush set so and uh, let me show you the thinness here you know i don't want it to be runny thin but i do i do want some thinner thinner white you can't just take it out of the bottle typically and, and throw it on there so now all i'm doing is taking the brush and going and filling in the blocks think of it that way I'm not trying to get every single edge I'm not trying to get every single little nook and cranny I am literally just putting paint over the dark areas up to or almost up to the edges on the panel lines and what that's gonna do is those raised areas that where the wash didn't settle those will have a different color the areas in the middle that might be darker or lighter will show through the translucency of the thinned white paint. And what you'll get is a visual variety of a white or a, a lightened color. So just work, work one section at a time. I'm gonna work the legs here. Don't try to keep going over and over and over it again. Let it, let it dry for a little bit. So if you do the front side of the leg, you're like, oh man, it's kind of darker here. I wanna add more to it. Well, just let it dry. Don't, don't keep hacking at it trying to put more and more paint on it and come back to it later. And if you make a mistake, you can dip your brush in, in water or have a, a cleanup brush available to you and try to use it over the, the recessed areas because your wash is dry, you'd be able to wick it out of the recesses. And if then, if you're still not able to do it, then don't worry about it because you can always just take a little touch of that soft wash and go right back where it is and target exactly where you'd like it to be darker. So it's a pretty forgiving process but it is a process and that's this is the this is the part where people are like I don't want to paint white it's like well if you've committed to doing it now might as well see it through to the end but this is why people typically pay other people to paint white I will add that after doing this soft body wash you could do a dry brush okay because you're gonna have the gray tones you're gonna have the darker tones and then if you did a a well executed dry brush you would get a better result than if you just tried to do white over black or white over a dark gray or so on and so forth so that is an option for you you don't have to just sit take all your time and paint every single panel and make it look you know the way that I'm doing it so I'm trying to provide every every skill level and every opportunity for a divergent path to 
the same result of a white or mostly white miniature. So if you don't want to take the time or you just, you know, hey, I want to get a whole company of these things painted up, well, that could be an option for you. I'd look to demo one, but I'm, I'm not uh, set up for that right now. Maybe sometime in the future on a live stream I'll throw down and see if I can get a decent white result. But this is about it. Uh, if I was using the, the regular white, off-white I should say, then I've got an option to use a pure white and come back and maybe dot or center center line the uh, the panels even a little more. So I could, for instance, this, if it was like, oh man, I still want it lighter here, I could come in with a, with a white that's thinned and just put it in that one area. And then I'd have a white, the translucency of the ivory would show through that, and then the ivory, and the translucency of the, the wash over the, the original panel, and then the edges. So without blending, you're getting transitions, which is nice if you don't want to paint a bunch of transitions. It's also nice if you don't feel you can do that, but it, it makes it more visually appealing and you get a nice weathered white look. If you want more pure or more uh, fresh off the off the paint rack or off the uh, assembly line type of look, this might is probably not the, the solution for you because it will take a lot of work to build it all the way back up to a very white color. You're probably better off working with white and then trying to do a, a pin wash or trying to take a fine brush and just do the very small details or even those those uh, ink pens, the uh, permanent ink pens, you can use those too. So I'm using a light touch. I'm keeping my, my brush mostly perpendicular to the panels that I'm going with. You can see I'm deliberately not going all the way to the edges. And if you're if you're painting white for any duration of time, you're probably going to need to add water to this at some point. It will it will start to get a little thicker on you, and you'll notice because you'll start to maybe see paint strokes or a little bit of the ridge lines and brush strokes and things building up. So just keep in mind that. Not only do you have to worry about the paint on the miniature, but the paint in the pot as well. And here I'm, I'm not doing the bottom, I'm just bringing it up to the top, almost to kind of add a little bit of a natural higher edge highlight. But without, I'm not painting it, I'm just, I'm just putting the paint there, I'm just placing it. So let the, let the paint do the work. And then once it's dry, you can see how it how the result is, and then adjust. So, I would recommend not spending a ton of time on each section trying to get it perfect until you've done the majority or the whole miniature just so that you can kind of see, oh man, that area is way brighter. I shouldn't have done all that second layer because the other side looks the way I want it to and it's nowhere near as, as bright and you kind of got to work backwards. White's already a process enough, so trying to reduce the total amount of time spent painting these is what I'm trying to demonstrate so but they, they do take longer it's just a longer process because of the the tendencies and the ways that the paint reacts interacts with other colors so
Okay, so once you're done putting the white down, you're gonna think I'm crazy again, but we're gonna put another wash over the white. So if you're happy with where it is, then you can stop, that's fine. And a lot of people will be like, yeah, I like that, that's great. However, like I said, I'm trying to match the previous scheme and since I wasn't the most efficient, I'm going to put another wash that's gonna make it look like this Tessin, which has a wash over the white that I did um, similar to the Vulcan. So the way to do that is you're basically just going to double the flow improver and the water ratio to the paint. So just one drop of paint with four drops of flow improver. I'm using Future Floor Polish. It's going to be very thin, which is what we want. Then we're just going to add in one. I'm just going to use a, I normally don't do this, but I'm going to use my loaded brush here and just use one drop of paint. Of course I spilled some of it onto the paper here, so I've got a so two half flip half brush loads, I guess. <laughs> one whole one. There we go. And it's gonna be noticeably thinner on the color. Uh, you can see how thin that goes on. Let me pull up some of the regular. You can just see already the opacity between the two. It's much darker. Okay, so this is the original mix, this one, two, four, and this is the thinner one that I just made. So if you want, if you had it in the dropper bottle, you would just put it into the lid, and then for every drop you put in, you would just add two drops of flow improver and four more drops of water. So easy enough if you keep it, if you get that recipe where you like it and you want to use this on multiple whites and light grays and things like that so all right so we've got our Vulcan all white now and what this is going to do is I haven't I haven't gone in and touched up any darkening areas and that's because I knew I was going to do this wash afterwards and I had explained before where you would take that other wash and you could go in and fix it but this you can see how it's nowhere near as dark as the previous wash and that's what we want I want to gr to grit and grime up this white just a little bit and the benefit is that the wash is going to go into those recesses and just smoothly transition those dark areas with the lighter areas and everything's gonna look really good when it's done so and I know this is a process guys white hands down is a process but I'm trying to get it to look its best and trying to show you what I do so at any point you can say, no, I don't, I'm happy with what I got. I'm not going to take it any further. That's perfectly okay. But you can see this is almost just a, a hint of, yeah, I want to make it just a little bit grayish. And what's going to happen, get my paper towel over here, is you're going to get some of this gradation. There's going to be areas where it's lighter. There's going to be areas where it's darker. And it's going to look good. It's going to look like a dirty, gritty, used, worn white that you would think would be on a on a battle mech so again this isn't this might not be for everybody but this is what I did to paint those one those miniatures 10 years ago and I am duplicating that to the best of my ability and this is the process that I wrote down so now all these little like sub thin areas here where the recesses weren't as deep they're gonna get that extra little little bit to hopefully just kind of tie them all together and bring out just a little bit more accent and I'm using my my detail or uh, my number zero brush for this. I, I want to be more direct and accurate with this at each each phase. So you can use whatever you like, but I'm I'm trying to keep it reasonable, and not put too much on at once because I definitely don't want it to pull now because then I've got to go back and fix it. And there's a spot on the Tessin that I missed because I was in a hurry, and now I've got to go back and touch it up. So this back and forth that you got to play this game, you got to play with white is is just a reality when it comes to brushing on white. If you've got an airbrush, there's a whole different way to go in about doing it. But at the end of the day, you're going to still need to get the brushes out and ha hash it out with the miniature. This white just is just a difficult color to, to paint. It just takes a lot of labor. It's a lot of labor. But at least this way, I can show you all the different methods and ways to go about it and if I were dry brushing so I'll talk about that too if I were dry brushing I would definitely do this wash over the top of this thinned wash because then you're going to help with some of those 
inconsistencies and the, the little texturing that you're going to get just that goes along with doing a dry brush. A little too much right there. A little too much right there. So that's what the detailed brush is for. I'm going in and I'm fixing these things right away. And, and in reality, a, a small little dab of paint will be easy to fix. Paint wasn't quite dry back here. I'll have to fix that later. And of course, I've still got to add my metallics and the joint details and the, all that other stuff, but this is the lion's share of the paint scheme right here. Just getting this, this white to look the way you want it to look. And you can obviously use this soft wash, you know, you can touch up and go back and like, oh man, I didn't quite get that one little area I wanted. I would do two coats of this over trying to use the darker version at the end result because you know once you once you put it on it's it's that's what it is and if it's a little too much or it's a little too dark you've already you've already kind of pulled the trigger on it so this at least gives you you know a couple three attempts to to go well yeah I'm just gonna tone it up just a little more and throw just a little bit into a crevice or a little bit onto a panel and just get that little bit of extra contrast or to match up the contrast on another area so that's what I like about this this little bit of the process and again you know if you're if you're doing a bunch of these you know you can you can assembly line it and it won't be near as bad as you know one miniature just put it down and wait so on and so forth but And then at the end, what if you really wanted to make it white and really pop, this is where after this wash or these washes had dried, if you've done more than one, you could go in with that pure white or that off white, depending on which color you used, if you used the ivory, and dab it into the, or uh, leave it real thin and put it you know, in an area to basically provide a highlight. anywhere that you think extra lighter, extra white contrast would be necessary, you know, on edges, things like that, so. Top of that shoulder, or at this whole top of the side. Take care of those little, little bubble buildups and. Now we've got contrast, gradient, smoothing, recessed areas. Everything's covered. So now, once this dries, it'll match this tessin, which you can see hopefully with some of the light here. I'm trying to catch an angle on the shoulder blade or shoulder. There we go. There's some gradation. Now, some of that gray did pool on these leading edges of the shoulder baffle, so right here. So that's what I'm talking about, where even if you don't necessarily want to go back and highlight absolutely everything, I'm going to go in and I'm going to put a little bit of color here just to break it up. I'm not even going to try to get to the edge. I'm just going to literally just put it right over the gray. And what that's going to do on the finished miniature, which the example we're using as a guide, like this awesome here, is you can see, there we go. You can see on the panel, you know, on the shoulder here, you know, there's there's a dark spot here, a light spot here. There's a little bit of an edge that looks worn right here. On the leading edge of the uh, of the awesome, yeah, this oh, right here, you can see where I went in and just put that center line on there. And overall, the effect 
is that you've got worn edges, you've got white because you used white, but you still got all the dark lines and all the contrast that you were hoping to achieve. So that is the goal. So to recap, start with a light gray. In our case, we used sky gray. And then wash with the soft gray wash, which I showed you how to do. Paint the white and then wash with a thin version afterwards and then highlight and edge touch up and that's it now you've got white appreciate you guys watching always a always a pleasure to help share and enforce the reinforce the hobby um, some of you have asked about how to donate or how to contribute to camo specs online and we are a completely volunteer organization. We don't get any sort of funding or uh, kickbacks or anything like that from the company in that regard. So when we do conventions or we do projects, things like that, uh, if it, we don't get direct support from whatever, from either you know the Iron Metals or Catalyst or whatever that's something provided, we don't get funds necessarily to do those things. So uh, website production, all that kind of stuff, that is all done volunteer basis or from people that don't donate and volunteer their time or resources. So. Uh, if you guys like these tutorials and you like what you're seeing, uh, you like a particular video or whatever, uh, I'm going to throw down the official Camo Specs uh, PayPal page. And if you want to donate something, we appreciate it. We'll never ask you guys for money. We'll never ask you guys to to do something because, or, or say that we can't do something because of you guys not giving us funds. But if that's something that you feel compelled to do and you want to, that's a vector for you guys to go ahead and, and do that. And we, of course, appreciate you guys regardless of whether or not you donate. Uh, we appreciate you guys already. So that's, you know, the, the fact remains that uh, this is just something that I, I've been asked about a few times on how to support us if, if that's something you want to do. And I guarantee all of the, those funds go to convention projects, the website uh, upkeep, uh, maintenance building, which I know it's a process, but I just want to let that let that be known that the, the button is not a, a grab for money from us to go and do something that we want to do, but that's just basically to help us continue doing what we do and help us get those projects, get those terrain boards and, and dioramas and stuff like that transported and built. Those are, there's a huge expense and it. it almost always comes out of the CSO artist's own personal funds. So like I said, we appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Look forward to making another video you know, videos here in the near future. Thanks again. We'll see you next time. Shutdown sequence initiated.